in all of my work, I have never begun by asking the big questions because I was always afraid that I would come up with small answers. And I have preferred, therefore, to address these things which are minutiae or detail in order that I might then be able to put together in a gestalt a picture which, uh, if not an explanation, is at least a description, a more full description of what transpired. And in that sense, I look also upon the bureaucratic destruction process, for this is what it was, as a series of minute steps taken in logical order and relying above all as much as possible on experience, past experience. And this goes not only incidentally for the administrative steps that were taken, but also the psychological arguments, even uh, the propaganda. Uh, amazingly little was newly invented until, of course, the moment came when one had to go beyond that which had already been established by precedent and one had to gas these people or, in some sense, annihilate them on a large scale. Then these bureaucrats became inventors. But like all, all inventors of institutions, they did not copyright or patent their achievements and they prefer obscurity. What did they get from the past, the Nazi? They got the actual content of measures which they took. For example, the barring of Jews from office, the prohibition of intermarriages, the employment in Jewish homes of female persons under the age of 45, the various marking decrees, especially the Jewish star, the compulsory ghetto the avoidance of any will executed by a Jew that might work in such a way as to prevent inheritance of his property by someone who was a Christian. Many such measures had been worked out over the course of more than a thousand years by authorities of the church and by secular governments that followed in those footsteps. And the experience gathered over that time became a reservoir that could be used, and which indeed was used to an amazing extent. You mean that what one can compare? One can actually compare, one can compare a rather large number of German laws and decrees with their counterparts in the past and find complete parallels even in detail, as if there were a memory which uh, automatically extended to the period of 1933 and 1935 and 1939 and beyond. In such respects, they didn't invent anything. They invented very little, and they did not invent the, uh, the portrait of the Jew, which also was taken over lock, stock and barrel from writings going back to the 16th century. So even the propaganda, the realm of the imagination and invention, even there they were remarkably in the footsteps of those who preceded them from Martin Luther to the 19th century. And here again they were not inventive. They had to become inventive with a final solution. That was their great invention and that is what made this entire process different from all others that had preceded that event. And in this respect, what transpired when the final solution was adopted, or to be more precise, when the bureaucracy moved into it, was a turning point in history. Even here, I would suggest a logical progression one which came to fruition in what might be called closure. Because from the earliest days, from the 4th century, 5th century, 6th century, the missionaries of Christianity had said in effect to the Jews, you may not live among us as Jews. 
the secular rulers who followed them from the late Middle Ages had then decided you may not live among us and the Nazis finally decreed you may not live. This means that the three steps were the first one was conversion. Conversion the second followed one by ghettoization expulsion, or expulsion. Expulsion. And the third was the territorial solution, which was of course the solution carried out within the territories under German command, excluding immigration, death. Final solution. And the final solution, you see, is really final because people who are converted can yet be in secret Jews. People who are expelled can yet return. But people who are dead will not reappear. And in such a respect, the last stage, they were really pioneers and uh, they inventors. Were this was something unprecedented, and this was something new. And how can one figure give some ideas about the complete newness of this? Because I see that it was new for themselves too. Yes, it was new, and uh, this I think for this reason that one cannot find a specific document, a specific plan, outline, or blueprint which states, now the Jews will be killed. Everything is left to inference from general words. Inference Ev from? General wording. Mm -hmm. The very wording, final solution, or total solution, or territorial solution, leaves something to the bureaucrat that he must infer. He cannot read that document. One cannot even read Goering's famous letter to Heydrich at the end of July 1941, charging him in two paragraphs to proceed with the final solution and taking that document aside. Everything is clarified. Far from it. it far from it. Far from it. It was an authorization to invent. It was an authorization to begin something that was not as yet capable of being put into words. I think it, I think of it that way. And it was the case for every agency, as a matter of fact. Absolutely for every agency. In every aspect of this operation, invention was necessary. Certainly at this point. Because every problem was unprecedented. Not just how to kill the Jews, but what to do with their property thereafter. And not only that, but how to deal with the problem of not letting the world know what had happened. All of these multitudes of problems were new. <laughs>